Okay, so the first thing that we're going to look at is the structure of the elements in the periodic table. So, to do this uh, activity, you're going to need a printed out page of the data booklet. So, this is from the higher advanced higher chemistry data booklet, and it's page six, um, or just any periodic table really will be fine. And then some highlighters. Uh, you'll need four different colours uh, minimum. And if you can't print off a copy of a periodic table, then I would just kind of try and sketch one out as best you can. Okay, so um, the elements will ex exist in different structures and states. So um, we're going to have a look at what the different kind of regions of the periodic table exist as, because that then leads in eventually to us explaining why that then it dictates how they behave and uh, how they react and what sort of state they're in at room temperature etc etc. So the first structure we're going to look at is one that you would have learned in National 5 chemistry and um, that's metallic lattice. So all of the metal elements are in a metallic lattice structure. Uh, so I'm going to take one of my colours of highlighters and colour all of those elements in. Okay, so there's all the metals coloured in. Um, so that's where the staircase should be, underneath the hydrogen, and then if we go along down the side of boron, and then it uh, zigzags all the way down to the bottom. Um, so what I'm going to do now is add in a little key. So i do my little orange blob, and then next to that I'm going to write metallic lattice. Okay. So the next structure we're going to look at is a covalent network. So again, you learned about covalent networks in National 5 chemistry, um, if you've done that before. So in National 5, you would have learned that carbon and silicon are both uh, in covalent network forms, and that is still true. However, also, and this is one you maybe haven't heard of before, boron is also a covalent network. Um, so I'm going to colour those ones in. However, for carbon, and I'll explain why in a minute, I want you to just colour in half the box with the colour you've picked for your covalent networks. Okay, so that's me coloured in the three covalent networks, boron, carbon and silicon. Remember, carbon only coloured in half the box, and I'll explain why in a second. And then again, another little dot, okay, and then that's for covalent networks. So now we're going to move on to covalent molecules. So in National 5, you would have learned about the seven diatomic elements. So hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine, they all exist in diatomic molecules, two of the atoms stuck together. Um, so they do exist as covalent molecules, so I'm going to colour them in, in the colour that I picked for covalent molecules. Okay, so that's me coloured in the seven diatomic elements in my purple colour, and I've added that to my key. This word here, discrete, you'll see that sometimes it just means small, um, so the structure of these elements could be described as a discrete covalent molecular structure. However, there are some other elements that do exist as discrete covalent molecules. They are not diatomic, however, they are bigger than that, so... The first one is phosphorus. So phosphorus exists as P4. So that means there's four phosphorus atoms joined together in one molecule of phosphorus. And because of that, I'm going to write in the box, because it's important that you remember that it exists as P4. I'm just going to write at the top of the box P4. Okay, so see that there that's what phosphorus exists as then the other the next one that's also a covalent molecule is sulfur so sulfur exists as s8 which means there are eight sulfur atoms joined together the sulfur atoms eight of them are joined in a big ring so it's a big ring of eight for the phosphorus it's joined um kind of like in a triangle i'll upload some pictures for you to see so again i'm just going to write in here s8 Okay, so we've got P4 for phosphorus, S8 for sulphur. That will, we'll use that um, later on when we start to look at how these structures affect their melting and boiling points and things like that. So then the last covalent molecule is 
uh, carbon. So as well as is ex existing as a covalent network, carbon can exist as a discrete covalent molecule in the form of something called fullerene. Um, so fullerene is just a big ball-like structure uh, consisting of only carbon atoms. They are, their full name is Buckminster fullerene, so sometimes they'll get called buckyballs. Um, so a colour in the second half of the carbon box. Okay. And what I'm going to do on here is to annotate it to remind because that's a new word is I'm going to draw a line coming from the purple section and write fullerene. Okay, and then also just to remind yourself of the two different covalent networks carbon can exist as, it can exist as diamond or graphite. Okay, and if you remember graphite's the covalent network structure of carbon that can conduct. Okay, so that's for the covalent molecules. So you've got all the diatomics, including hydrogen, Phosphorus is P4, sulfur is S8, and then the carbon in the form of fullerenes. Uh, the most one of the most common fullerenes is uh, C60. So that means there's 60 carbon atoms in the fullerene ball. But again, I'll post some pictures so you can see what they actually look like. Okay, so then the last structure is one again you learned about in National 5. So I'm going to take a different colour, and that is monoatomic so that means it's just a single atom that's not joined to anything uh, and as we know that's the noble gases because they don't form any bonds because they have stable electron arrangements already so i'm going to take my last color and color in the noble gas column okay so that's me colored in the group zero elements and like i said they're monoatomic in structure so that just means single atom so if you think you might forget what monoatomic means then i would maybe write that next to um, the monoatomic word there. Okay, so sometimes you'll only see these colour-coded periodic tables for the first 20 elements, so up to calcium, and sometimes you'll only be asked about structures of those elements, but I think it's quite good to see um, the majority of them. You'll notice there are a few that aren't coloured in, and that's just because <clears throat> you don't really get asked about them, so we don't really need to worry too much. So as long as you have the main ones that are coloured in here, and you can remember their structures, that's what you're really trying to achieve from this. It's a good idea to hang this up and make sure that you're using it <coughs> for reference whenever you're completing any questions on the structure of elements. I'll uh, give you some questions on this to follow up just to make sure that you're applying your new knowledge. Um, but yeah, that's it for this one.